today's message, uh, the title for today's message is, I didn't have time to do the PowerPoint, but focus on Jesus. You know, today in the world of multitasking, keeping focus is not easy. You, you, maybe some of you ha like pictures and cameras, and when you have the camera and the picture is, the focus of the picture is not clear, it will be blurry or it can not present what you're expecting. Some, some people is very aficionate with cameras and pictures. That's not my gift. Uh, uh, however, we live in a world full of distractions. And I have to say, not all distractions are bad. And that's the tricky thing. For example, we can be distracted because of family. And it can become in the place that Jesus should be. We can be distracted because of job, because we want some money to offer to our family a better life, because of education, because we want to grow and have other degrees and things like that. We can be distracted because of safety, because we want things to be safe. We want to take care of every detail. We can be distracted even about patriotism. The worst distractions for the church today are not the things that are bad, are the things that are good but not the right things. And today I would like to speak with you about a time of crisis when the prophet Isaiah found a distraction and then he found the, the real focus or the real thing to get focused into. And that's the chapter 6 of Isaiah. Many people know that chapter because it is Isaiah's call. But I would like to take some time with you and I will let, and, and, I, and I'm just uh, preventing you. Take your Bible. We will read some Bibles today. Uh, I enjoy when I can do that. And as I don't have the screen, you can come with me and we can see beautiful parts. And, and sometime I will ask you because I want everybody to read some chapter, some, some verse together, uh, verses together. So please, let's pray and go into it because we can be distracted by good things. But we should focus on Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Father, as we speak the word, as we open it, as we praise you for it, we are thankful for the gift of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who can come and use imperfect people for perfect, thi for perfect things. Give us your power and energy so we can present the word in a way that can be inspiring and can move things in people's hearts, close to your heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Isaiah chapter 6. And uh, Brother Ray read it in the, in the scripture reading. Verse 1. But I like that the King James has so, something more special or the version that he used. But in the one that I have, the ESV says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne. I think your version says, I also saw the Lord sitting upon his throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. We'll go back to that verse a couple of times. But first we have to see what's going on in the year that King Uzziah died. The best way to understand it is if we know who is, who was the King Uzziah. And the King Uzziah, for some biblical scholars, was the best and greatest king of Judah. Just one king was uh, on top of him, Jehoshaphat, and Solomon. But when Solomon, the kingdom was together. David, the kingdom was together. So with Uzziah, they reached the top of their experience, the top of their power. So everybody believed that something was in him that made him so successful and that their safety was because of Uzziah's presence. And, and I would like for you to join me in 2 Chronicles chapter 26, verses 3 and 4. So we can understand a little bit what is the crisis that they are expect, experiencing them and why it is so important, the words of the prophet Isaiah. Chapter 26, verses 3 and 4 says, Uzziah was 16 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 52 years in Jerusalem. Verse 4, and he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, according to all 
that his father a Messiah had done. So he offered to, to his people 52 years of stability. If you see, if you watch the news, you know that stability in many places don't last long. If you have 10, 20, 30 years of stability, usually that gives the country a lot of financial and, 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 and strength because it, it makes the people united and it makes the people progress in the right direction. But if you see in Second Chronicles chapter 26, verses 6 until 21, I'm not going to read all that, but it's just to let you know, you can maybe read it at home, the whole chapter. You will understand 6 to 15, what was his gift? Uzziah gave to the people trust in his leadership. One of the things that he did is that God helped him to do a lot of things. So in many, in many of the kings of Judah, they are presented that they reigned and they, follow, they followed what was supposed to happen and they did what other people thought. But Uzziah was a constructor. He was a visionary. He was a fighter. He created a strong army. He, he by weapons and, and, and tools for his army. He built cities. He built fortified cities. So when he was the king, nobody ever tried to face Uzziah. And when they tried, they failed. Now, why King Uzziah died? Interesting. Verse 16, Second Chronicles 26, 16 says, But when he was strong, he grew proud to his destruction, for he was unfaithful to the Lord his God, and entered the temple of the Lord to burn incense on the altar of incense. Interesting. The greatest king, since when he was 16 years old, he reigned for 52 years. So I think he was pretty old now. So how did he miss that? In the parallel text in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 15, verse 4 says, verse 3 it says he did something great, he was a great king. But verse 4, verse 4 says, nevertheless, the high places were not taken away. People still sacrificed and made offerings on the high places. So King Uzziah was doing something great here. 52 years of financial and, and strong stability to the people. However, as he was praising God in his reign, in his territory, where he was protecting them from the enemies, he allowed the enemies to be inside. And when the enemies are inside, in Isaiah's eyes, he got distracted. And he started in his heart fostering thoughts of mixing religions with outside practices let me give you an example of that or let me explain that better in the in the past the king in many of those kingdoms was also the priest the king was the owner of the land the king was the owner of the worship the king was a god for many people can you imagine 52 years so i think that he cannot even remember when he was not the king. And now he has his 52 plus 16 is 68. And in that time, it is a pretty good age. He was respected because he was a king. But also because for many people, that was the only king that ever existed. And now he is the king that God is with him. He has been successful. He built the prosperity that we see. So... Uzziah started believing his own thing. He got distracted. One day he said, if the others do it, why, I, why don't I? And all the people tells me, king, you should go to the temple. Because, because, you know, we respect that. You worship Jehovah. We respect Baal. Or, or we worship other God. But king, there's no king like you. There's nothing else that nobody else that can do these blessings and the great things that you have done. And I think that in some moment, it came to his mind that the temple was also his property. And he came inside 
and he started officiating as he wasn't supposed to. And the priests were there. They were brave. All of them came. King, you shouldn't do that. When he got angry with them, leprosy came out. And that was his end. But even though he was sick with leprosy, he was still alive. And his son took the public position, but he was still the advisor. And people felt safe because Uzziah was still the king. And people believed that Uzziah, there is the same Azariah in the book of Kings. They believed that he was the secret of the safety in his people. And now he died, and now the kingdom of Assyria is coming as an empire. And he's taking all their enemies down, and now they're attacking. And Isaiah is coming forward, and he says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I also saw the Lord. A lot of people is focusing in the death of Uzziah. A lot of people is complaining, what are we going to do because Uzziah is dead? What is going to happen now because now we have no powerful king. Now we don't know the experience of this king. Now we don't know what he will do. Now the other nations doesn't respect our king. But in the same year that he died, Isaiah wrote, I also saw the Lord. What a mighty vision. He saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe. That's a word that I learned yesterday. The train of his robe, the borders of his dress, of this tunic, of this robe, filled the temple. A lot of people was focused on the dead king. But God was still high and lifted up. And just the train of his robe can fill the temple. But people wasn't focusing. People lost it because they were crying, Uzziah. Church, when Jesus came to this earth, he came in a time where a lot of people was also suffering, was also struggling, was also losing their faith. The Desire of Ages, page 32 says, At this time, the systems of idolatry were losing their hold upon the people. It's a chapter called The Fullness of Time. And it's describing the time where Jesus came. He says, at this time, even the systems of idolatry were losing their hold upon the people. Men were tired of falsehood and fiction. They searched for a religion that could satisfy the heart. While the light of truth seemed to have departed from among them. There were souls who were looking for light. And who were filled with perplexity and sorrow. They were thirsty for a knowledge of the living God for some assurance of life beyond the grave. And we live in a time that is very much like it. Have you heard about fentanyl, for example? The new zombie drug is how people call it. I know in, in the medicine area they use it as it's supposed to be. People is going to a point where they are needing something stronger and stronger and stronger to find meaning in, its, in, its, in this life. Now you see that it's not only churches, Christian churches or new churches. You have all kinds of communities. Or you have all kinds of philosophies giving people meaning because the people now, they are tired of the systems of the world. Some people still is looking the real God. Some people still is looking to experience God. And that's the people that is focused. If you see when Jesus came, we have a couple examples of a, some of them that were focused. For example, Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, verse 15 and 16. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has made known to us. Now, Ellen G. White also mentions that in the Desire of Ages, that those shepherds, they were there, but they were longing 
for the fulfillment of the time. They were expecting the Messiah. They were doing their job, but their heart was in God's purpose, in God's vision, in God's business. So the angels, instead of going to see the priest or the king, came to get, came right there to those simple shepherds to tell them something great happened and you are invited. Your focus, your eyes are where they are supposed to be. Then you see a little bit later, the, uh, uh, when Jesus was presented in the te- at the temple, chapter 2, verse 25. Now there was a man in Jerusalem. Listen, it is not there was a group of men in Jerusalem getting, gathering together. No. It is not there was a community in Jerusalem. No. There was a whole synagogue in Jerusalem. No. There was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout. Waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. One man, in the midst of the noise, in the midst of distraction, in the midst of the many options, in the midst of many good things happening, instead of being fighting against the Romans, instead of being fighting to see if it's John the Baptist or the Pharisees or the Sadducees or this new preacher or the old preacher or the Maccabeans rebellion. No, he was expecting God's fulfillment of time because he was focused. In the right thing. He wasn't waiting for a new wave. To be more spiritual. He was focused on the word of God. And God knew his name. We live in dangerous times. Where good things are distracting. Sometimes we can, we can get excited. But we can get distracted. But some people was expecting Jesus to come. And all of them, they were trusting in the promises of the word. They were not trusting in a new preacher or a new movement. They were trusting that God's word are right, true, and they will be fulfilled. So they are expecting it and they are enjoying it. And then when the time came, they were there. And I like it because the Lord fulfilled his promise to them as well. Another example is the wise men. From very far. They have been reading. And they got convinced that this is something great. And that, and that the Jewish people have something great. And they study the prophecies of Daniel. And they saw this is the time of the fulfillment of the prophecies. They were ready. But listen to this. They were not the best scholars. Because when they came and asked for the king, the Jewish priests, they knew the prophecies. And they repeated in Matthew chapter 2, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. But they acted with everything they had. And they did better than the scholars. Who had the information, but not the formation. Had the information, but not the heart to work with it. And you see that all these people who was waiting and focused on on this fulfillment of the promise. As soon as they heard that it's true. As soon as they noticed that it's movement. They were convinced. They acted upon it. The shepherd, they didn't say, you know, this is a bad time. It's winter coming. My my, my sheep are here. I need to do something now. I will wait a little bit. They said, the Bible says that they, at that same moment, this is great. We have to go and see the blessing and the word that the Lord has shown to us. The same with, with, with with the wise men. This is great. We have to go. The same with Simeon. Lord, I can die peacefully. You have fulfilled your promise. Because their focus wasn't in the things that we can see. They found things that are unseen. And they trusted it. And they lived by it. And that put them in the right place. Church. Jesus came to bring God. And to reveal him at its fullest. There is no greatest gift than Jesus. There is no greatest example of God. Then Jesus, John chapter 1 verse 14 says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. 
and we have seen his glory. Glory as the only son from the father full of grace and truth. But his people lost him. They were busy in great things, but they were not focused in the greatest thing. When Isaiah chapter 1, chapter 6, verse 1 says, the, the robe filled the temple. It comes to me to understand that it doesn't matter what the news are telling me about the present crisis. Because I imagine that a lot of great analysts were saying the king of Assyria is growing. They are approaching. They are close. They are now stronger than Egypt. They are destroying our enemies. So they will come for us too. And a lot of people were focusing on those reviews. But God was still in the throne. And his robe covered the temple. God's power God's lordship, God's under, God has everything under his control. And while Isaiah was afraid, he was praised by the angels in heaven. Please come with me to Isaiah chapter 6 to see those different, different uh, witnesses of God's presence. Isaiah is there afraid because he's concerned about the dead of King Uzziah. But Later on, you say, verse 2, above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings. With two, he covered his face, and with two, he covered his feet, and with two, he flew. And one called another and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the trees fall. Trees holes shook, and the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. I think you know the story in Solomon's temple. And said, Who is me? Isaiah now changed his version, changed his voice, changed his narrative. First, he was concerned about Uzziah's death and about the newspapers. Now he says, Woe is me, for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Woe is me. I have been distracted. I was concerned about the king. I was concerned about the kingdom. I was concerned about the walls of the city. I was concerned about our tools for war. And woe is me, because now I have seen that the Lord of hosts is under control. And I was distracted. It is powerful how easily can we, we can be distracted as well. We have a lot of things going on in every life, in every family. Maybe you have received people who has told you, I want you, I need you to pray for me. I don't know you. I found a few. I've heard a few. I've seen a few. But it is very difficult to bless them if you are not focused. Sometimes people come to you and tell you about a problem. Maybe that doesn't happen to you. But in my heart, I'm struggling with other problems. And I don't find words of encouragement to tell them because I'm so focused on my issues so I can't bless them. And I don't know how many blessings I've lost, opportunities to bless somebody else, because in the moment where I can share with them about Jesus, I am focused on politics and news and things in my country or family or somebody else. And the Lord is telling us today, I am still on the throne. I have control over this. I can take it. Now, I want to give you a reminder, but no, better, the Lord is going, to, is going to give you a reminder. I took this new King James because maybe it's going to be closer to what many of you have. Romans chapter 8. We'll read a couple of verses, but I want to hear your voices as well. Romans chapter 8, please, verse 31 and on. We'll read verse 31 until 35. And, and we'll read those verses together because in my life, in moments of losing focus, when I see how the Lord loves me and how he has done great things for me, it's a reminder that everything is okay. 
He's still on the throne. Romans chapter 8, verse 31 says, I will remove my microphone and we will hear everyone. So I'll put it far so everybody will listen, those who are on the video later. So please, uh, okay, I will read from the screen so we can read the King James, all of us, okay? Okay. One, two, three. What shall we do? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him of for us all, how shall we not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the church of God's elect? It is just justified. Who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us, who shall separate us from the love of Christ. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? I will stop there. I will continue now in, in, the, in the 37, but I want to stop there just, just to give you that reminder. Sometimes we are overwhelmed. The enemy wants us to feel that we are not enough, that we are sinners, that we are not doing everything that we should do, that we should do. However, when we see the word, he sees us with so much grace that he's willing to take us and work with us every day. And those things that are outside of our control, he says, I am the one who justifies. I am the one who bless you. I am the one who takes care of you. So keep focusing on me because I am working on you. And then verse 37. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The problems that are in the world, important things happening, they distract us. If we don't have this very clear. It's true. Sickness. In the prayer call, Every two or three days, somebody is sick. Somebody knows somebody who is sick. A couple of weeks ago, I received a phone call, a phone number that I, I wow, this person, this is not common. It's one young person from, that she uses to visit Bonafé. She's like 18. Yes, yeah, she's 18 now. And she called me because she was, I think she didn't have anybody else to call to say, pray for me. My cancer is bad. Yesterday, I received a text from a member from another church and told me, I know you're in celebration and things like that, but you need to know this person's cancer is back. Please pray for them. And I, and I have been praying for a week because I knew they were doing some research on them and they were just heartbroken. Every day you can see a lot of things. If you focus on them, you'll have nothing to offer. Because the world is full of that. And when the demand is low and the offer is high, the price is cheap. Problems are cheap. Give them Jesus. Does it make sense? Fill yourself with Jesus every day. So when you are going out from your home, when you are going out from your place, you say that anything you find, you are going to face it in the name of Jesus. And the people will know as you speak, as you treat them, as you smile at them, as you praise them, as you hug them, as you say hi to them, that you are different because you have Jesus on your side. That you are focused on Jesus, not in the death of the king, not in the situation outside, not in the problems in my own life. I will focus on Jesus because he's the only one that can bring a change to my life. Because when, our, when we are filled of Jesus, other people can get filled as well. 
I have things in my mind constantly. I may have things and concerns regularly. I'm human like you, so I understand this happens to you as well. But in Isaiah chapter 6, when the Lord called Isaiah, and he said, woe is me, I will die. Then he heard God asking him for a favor. Interesting. Maybe for Isaiah, for us it's not, but for a God like God, asking something, Lord. And the word says, and I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, the one that was distracted before, the one that was concerned before, the one that was looking at the news before, the one that was in social media the whole day before, the one that was concerned about who was sick in my family before, the one that was trying to see how to pay at the end of the month before, the one who was only trying to see in his life and his vision of the problems, that same person now, when he got focused on God, he said, here I am, sent me. And that's what makes the difference. People need to know that Jesus is still the king of this world. People need to know that God is on the throne and that he has everything under his control. Maybe there's somebody sick. Yes, it hurts, but God is in control. Somebody is having issues to pay the rent. Yes, God is in control. Somebody is having struggle or job, maybe a very tense situation with a co-worker. Yes, God is in control. Maybe something else is coming your way. Yes, if we focus on Jesus and we give them Jesus, they will know that we are full with Jesus. That makes a difference. Jesus, our God, he is in control. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I give you thanks for the word that we can see how persistently you give us reminders of your company. Lord, so many times we have acted or focused on the wrong things. I pray that you may forgive us, Lord. I ask you, Lord. Help us, to focus, help us to focus on you and your promises and your word and your truth. In the gift of Jesus in your second coming. And what is really going on behind it. You are on the throne, but the enemy is fighting fiercely. Lord, we need to focus to be relevant in this community. We need to focus to give a different word to people crying around us. We need to focus to call them and leave them with a prayer that gives joy and peace. We need to focus to serve you better. We need to focus to say, here I am. Send me. We need to focus, Lord. And we ask you, please, as a church, help us to focus on you. And that through you, help us to know what you want. Thank you, Lord. For being so gracious to us. For your love and compassion. In Jesus name we pray. Amen.